That boy that's sitting in the second chair over there was two months old. Stand up, Tyler. Stand up. He was two months old. Place this place was, okay? Now, I'll tell you a little bit about me, okay? I've, um, my PhD was actually before I came to AIU, okay? Wow, right? Think about that for a second. I actually had a PhD before I got a master's. Why was that? Well, because in my life, as Thomas would, 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 would have us uh, understand, many things differently, you know, can happen to you differently. Right? So in my life, my biochemistry degree took me down a path that wasn't providing what I needed at the time. Okay, So I had many things that I was doing at the time. I was working actually as a uh, radio disc jockey and being a biochemist at the same time. Right, Two jobs, trying to support a family of uh, you know, three children, three boys, uh, you know, living out in Pembroke Pines, you know, very expensive. And uh, the DJ, the radio station I worked at was uh, Kiss Country, 999 Kiss Country. Okay? That's right, my name was Steve Kicks on the radio. That's right. Okay, so I worked from midnight to six, and then woke up, okay, one day, uh, right about the time it was time for me to leave the, uh, the radio station, and heard a commercial about AIU, all right? It was a uh, commercial talked about getting in, uh, advanced degree in, 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 in information technology, and you can do it in 10 months, right? Now, I can do anything in 10 months, you know? I mean, I've just spent, you know, I'm, I'm working on the human genome stuff, I'm working on infectious diseases, and then I'm also a country DJ at nighttime, okay? So if I could do that, I could do anything else in 10 months, right? So I called them up, and I got accepted into the program because the PhD qualified me for everything. So I got into the program, and I went through this program, okay? Now, mind you, that degree, that master's in information technology, had me with five jobs before I even graduated, okay? So a week before I graduated, I had five job offers. Now, listen to this. Don't, don't take this, you know, it's, it's maybe, you know, ethically, it may be right, maybe not right, it doesn't matter. The point is, is I was scared about where my life was going, okay? And all I had was this amazing degree, right, with an amazing university that put me through an amazingly grueling 10 months, okay? And my family, by the way, congratulations to all the parents that dealt with these people up here, right, for, ten, for the time that they were in the school, because I know it's stressful for you too as well, okay? And they thanked you earlier, so I'm not gonna make them do that again. Okay, so when I left, I decided to take all five job offers. I staggered them, okay? I staggered them to start like every three weeks, you know? In case I got the first job, they didn't like me, they fired me. <laughs> You never know. You never know. So I took the first job. It was horrible. It was like an internet marketing company, and it was uh, you know a Spanish space. It was a startup. You know, I was like, I'm out of here. I worked two days. I was gone. Right. So then I called the second job, and I said, Hey, you know, something came up. I can actually start a little earlier. That was that. That was American Express. So. So I started with American Express as a developer. Um, that first job, by the way, paid three times as much as my biochemistry job was paying, okay, uh, in IT. And um, I thought I was robbing the bank, <laughs> you know, because I was like, I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, I'm not supposed to be making this. <laughs> but I did, you know. And then they kept promoting me because the experience that I brought to the table was such that it seemed as if I had years and years and years of experience in IT because of American Intercontinental University. Because they put us in small groups. Because they made us deal with other people in these groups. Okay? Because they put us through a grueling program with, you know, with people that, that we may have liked now. And then tore us up and put us with groups with people that weren't doing any work, but we had to carry the weight. You remember those people, right? Uh, right? Yeah. But what did you do? Did you stop? No, you gotta get that gray. Mm -hmm. So if it was you that did it, or if it was them that did it, it doesn't matter. The, the grade's gotta be graded. And you gotta, you gotta get that degree, okay? So the same thing happens in real world, okay? In real world, you're gonna be attached to teams that you're gonna have skaters. That's a Marine Corps term, by the way. 
Okay? You have skaters that they just they just they just move along in life, just breathing air, you know? There's a Cuban saying that says that they drown in a glass of water. Okay? All right? It's true, it's what people do sometimes. So you've got to be above that. All right? You've got to take the bull by the horns. You've got to be the leader. How are you a leader? Well, you start out with a good education. All right? But knowledge is power, right? Yes. Let me hear knowledge is power? I tell you you're wrong. It isn't. Knowledge is potential power. Okay. Action and knowledge is power. Okay. If you leave here today and you don't take that first step, knocking on that door, sending that letter to the dolphins, say, I'm ready for you, okay? Then you're just a smart person walking around life. What are you giving back? Right? What's the worst that could happen? They could say no. Right? But you're used to that. Right? Don't pretend like you never got a no. You know, like this is the first time you're gonna get oh I know. Don't pretend like you never did that. That's nothing new. So you send them another letter. And you thank them for the no. So, my job at American Express led me to teaching at local universities and colleges, okay, over that, over that year. That was a very busy year, okay? And that put me in a very unique situation, okay, where I got a letter from Palo Alto, you know that, that Silicon Valley, California, that's where all the big, big, big companies are, you know, like Microsoft, oh, Microsoft now in Seattle, but the time goes down there, you know, it's where Jobs is, that where Job was, bless his name, rest in peace, you know? Okay? That's where all those people were. I got a letter that said, we want you to come out here and we want to talk to you about a position. I said, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm making three times as much. <laughs> They're like, no, we want you to come out here. We're going to apply your first class. Pick you up in a limo. And I was like, what? I've never done that before. <laughs> Only play I've been on is a Marine Corps carrier, you know? And I was like, okay, I'll go out there. You know, I get out there as a little guy standing with a sign that says Socrates. <laughs> I picked up my bags and everything. I pulled out. I was like, no, I got it. I'm a big guy. Big guy. No, he said, no, I got it. I was like, okay. So he took me to this place. I did a presentation about five minutes. They slid a letter across to me. The letter looked. Was, was, was beautiful. It said, oh, Socrates, we'd like to bring you aboard. Uh, we're going to give you a part of our company. Let me, let me read this, because <laughs> my brain thinks in Spanish, you know, so I can translate it. And now I'm four times as much as I used to make as a scientist, right? And they're like, we'd like to bring you on board because of your, you know, your ability to, to, to teach and to have this degree from American Intercontinental University. So I said, let me think about it. Okay. <laughs> All right, don't twist my arm too much. Yeah. All right, when do I start? So they flew me out there to trade me for six months, you know, and then the rest is history. I did that for 15 years, okay? So for 15 years, I gave, I, gave, I gave science 10 years of my life. I gave this another 15 years of my life. I'm 50 years old, and I don't look it right. <laughs> right? And the most gratifying part of my life was what AIU gave me, okay? The, the experience, right, to be able to go into the world and not fear thinking outside of the box, okay? Not conforming to a mold, okay? I mean, my first impression was come up here right now and have you all do the, 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 the electric slide because, you know, with the, with the, 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 the sax and, 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 and Mr. Eugene's and, and, and Siobhan, boy, that guy's right. Everybody, spot! Most I've ever been nervous, okay? Because I'm supposed to, 
know, there's like this, this, this thing that's not supposed to say something that's going to make you go out into the world and say, wow, I'm sorry, just like me. So that your wives and your husbands and your your, your, your girlfriends, to soon be wives and your children, in 10 years from now, can look back at you and say, hey, remember that's what that guy said. Right? You want to do But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to impart on you some wisdom. Because if I was be talking to myself 30 years ago, you know, 20 years ago, whatever, okay? I keep it, you know, not that esoteric and just go straight into it. Just do it. Wait, that's not easy. Wait, no, no, I'm not serious. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, really, seriously, seriously. I'll, I'll joke aside. Do it. Okay? Whatever it is that you have in your mind, you sit aside, just do it. Okay? All right? Don't talk about it, because talking about it loses the one only commodity that you can't control. And that's time. When time is gone, Before you speak, think twice. Mm -hmm. And then, when you've thought about it, and you know what you're going to say, just shut up. <laughs> Don't. Okay? Because if you had to think twice about it, you weren't supposed to say anything about it. <laughs> When you're down, reach up. Boom! Yeah, that was your mind, right? When you're down, reach up. Let's apply that first, obviously, to the, to the most obvious one, right? When you're down, reach to your creator. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Whether it's God, Allah, Buddha, okay? I'm not religious this specific, you know? I don't hate nobody. Okay? up, right? If you don't have that, reach out to somebody in your in your organization. Become of an organization. Reach out to somebody who's doing exactly what you want and ask them. Say, how are you doing that? Tell me. Give me a hand. Help me with this. Tell me what I need to do, right, to better myself. The way that Thomas reached out to Siobhan, right, and said, hey, I need to get into this place. What do I do? Okay? You'll be surprised how many people, even right now, the connections that you made, Okay, they may take off, and later on, you may reach out to them and say, hey, I need a little help, and they'll say, D take all these steps, okay? So when you're down, reach up, and when you're up, reach down, okay? Get back. You know, I don't know any of my friends, all right, that are successful, and when I mean successful, I mean I have money. Right? Not having success, but I mean, like, really rich. Money isn't everything, but, you know, it's like up there with oxygen. Um, <laughs> that's Zig Ziglar. Um, okay? But, having said that, reach down, because nobody wants to be there by themselves. Okay? Nobody wants to, you know, take trips and family education and stuff like that without having people that love with them. Okay? Nobody that is wealthy, okay, I don't care what you think, is stingy enough to not help down. They always give. Okay? So don't be that guy. The more you give, the more you get back. Amen. You know, when you were younger, your parents might have said, hey, tell me who you, to who you hang with and I'll tell you who you are. Okay? Mm -hmm. Recruit equal or above. Mm -hmm. Okay? That means when you look for friends and relationships, and people that you want to network with, people that are equally motivated to you, or even more motivated than you are, that have the same drive, or drive better, that have the same vision, or even clearer vision, okay? Who are as hungry as you, or starving, okay? Because if you align yourself with those individuals, 
you create momentum. Okay? And that momentum is unstoppable. Brush your teeth and floss. <laughs> It's been shown with the lower blood, blood pressure and cholesterol. No, really, I'm serious. Brush your teeth and floss. <laughs> Own your actions. Okay? If you did something, you did it, man. That's it. You know? Oh, you know, it's about to ship on me if you do it. Yeah. Oh, you know, no. You did it. Take the responsibility for it. Okay? Right? You'll, you'll find that people respect you more for that. Okay? You'll create relationships that are solid. Okay? Decide and commit to quality fuel every day. Now, I don't mean like Exxon versus, you know, whatever other gas station. You know, I'm talking about the fuel you put in your body. Okay? There's an 80 20 rule. It's all about, you know, it's, it's more nutrition than it is working out. It's true. I used to be 280 pounds. Mm. Look at me today. Okay? All I did was change the way I ate. Mm. Okay? Get rid of processed foods. Uh, um, carbonated beverages. Slow down your red meats. Or get better quality red meats. Okay? Because you know what they're feeding the red meat, the same garbage that they're feeding you with the processed foods. So you gotta get you know, you gotta think above that. Okay? Read the label, stay away from GMO, irradiated, and synthetics. Okay, if it was made by man to put in a food, what the heck is that about? It's all logical, guys. Right? If you're not feeling well, it's because it's your fault, right? Own it. I'm telling you, I own it. Okay. okay? If you're not happy right now, it's because of you. If you're not happy right now, and that's everybody here, not just you guys, it's because of you. You choose peace over everything else. Okay? You're driving down the street, somebody cussing in front of you. Ah! Or you can say, whatever, have a nice day. Right? I still have that problem, but I'm working on it. I'm not perfect. I'm perfectly imperfect. Okay? It's just you. It's just you. No more than that. Consistency equals success. Right? If every day I practice piano, I get better. If every day I speak to people, Every day I love stronger. I'm better. Love can change the world, but you gotta start by loving you first. Mm -hmm. you know? How many people have seen a child? This is the last one. How many people have seen a child go from a baby being born like the ones out here to walking? How many? How many know a child that has never walked? Mm -hmm. Just decided never to walk at all. They just grew up and said, you know, they they went to second, third. Forget the physical, just in general. It doesn't happen. Why? Because we don't let them quit. We don't let a baby quit.
American Intercontinental University. Mm. Who's ever looked at the, those words in conjunction together? Who's ever put it together and wondered why is the word intercontinental in there? Well, I started thinking about that last night. First time in like 20 years, right? And I said, well, what does intercontinental really mean? Why is it in my university thing? Okay. Well, Miriam Webster says that uh, intercontinentals, they have two. I'm going to go to both of those. It extends, extending among continents or carrier between continents. Right? And I was like, okay, that makes sense. That's what I thought it was. And then I said, well, let me look at what the word continent means. So I started looking at that, and there's an archaic term for the definition of continent. And it means something that serves as a container or boundaries. Something that serves as a container or boundaries. When you put that into the first definition, it says to extend or extending among something that holds something or boundaries, right? Or carrier between something that serves a container or boundaries, right? And I tell you, day one when you walked in through the door here, your container was empty, man. It was, you know? And today, your container is not, right? And you may think that you don't have anything in that container that's worthwhile, but I'm here to tell you, and so is Mr. Eugene, okay? That what you have is priceless, okay? If you follow, if you can read between the lines and hear what we're saying, okay? It is priceless. 